Welcome back to Seabash 4K, and this is my XCOM 2 tier list. Now, in case you hadn't noticed, last time I played XCOM 2, I destroyed it in an easy victory for me. It was easy. It was so simple. <laughs> I kid, of course. I uh, watched the full series. You don't know what I'm talking about. There should be a playlist on my channel somewhere you'll find it don't worry i believe in you but now let's change gears and let's talk about tier lists i did pretty much all the tier lists i could find on tier maker uh we got to we're on utility items now i think i think that's a recent one that came out a few months back so i finally getting around to it and i'm glad that you're all here watching it so without further ado Let's begin. I think we'll begin with vests. Yes, vests are pretty important because they actually have extra health and protection and various other bits and bobs. We'll begin with the nano fiber vest. I bring this, you, oh yeah, I'll, and for the ranking, I have always bring, bring irregularly, bring irregularly, that means. Sometimes or something other times and finally if, and then if I have room that means If everything else is filled up in this area categories, uh, if I have some extra space I might bring that as like an extra thing and then I have never even build as stuff I just don't even bother with you know if if I have the option to like some of these items don't have an option to be built some of them are, are uh, randomly built and to be perfectly clear if they weren't randomly randomly built, I probably wouldn't pick them if I put them in never build. But yeah, nano fiber vest bring is bring irregularly. That means I will bring it some of the time, like when the situation calls for it or I have room. Like not, you know what? Let's bring it down a bit to if I have room. Because later on, you get a replacement for this, and if I have an extra spot open, I'm just like, okay, I'll just put on a nano, nano, nano fiber vest. And a, nano fiber, a nano fiber vest. I couldn't say nano for some reason. And it's it doesn't protect you from having your soldiers spend some time in the hospital, because they always take time in the hospital to get hit by anything, so... That's the price you pay for it. I wish it did. I would probably pull up higher if it didn't do that. But it's like something I build early on and I use maybe a few times on my Ranger or my, on the Soldier I think is going to be at the front the most. And But sometimes, to be perfectly honest, to be perfectly, perfectly honest, um, I barely bring it. Not because I don't think protecting soldiers is important this is like I prefer a grenade I prefer anything else from this list almost anything else from this list to fill that slot because you have one slot early on and you know it's it's necessary to protect yourself with something now later in the game late later in the game uh, it becomes even more useless because you got better stuff you got better options for vests and for equipment so even if you get once you get the two slot uh, armor unlocked it's still a I will bring it if we have room like if we have an extra spot open then yeah we'll probably bring it if not probably not hazmat vest I bring it irregularly like if I feel like I'm gonna give it with a lot of acid or uh, poison attacks then I bring or fire attacks I bring that it's a good protection against it. Uh, and it, I pick one soldier. I pick usually my ranger because I used to put my ranger in a very dangerous situation, in case you didn't notice, uh, from my last playthrough, from pretty much all my playthroughs. Like, you always have to put your ranger in dangerous situations to get them to get the maximum benefit out of what they can do. Um, let's move it up. Let's move it down in... Hellweave. 
I bring it regularly. Uh, that's like my favorite one to put on a ranger that does a ton of damage. It basically turns them into crystal killers. You put them out for farthest and you have them have that audio attack ability plus two. Like just all the other um, close range abilities. Plus that vest. Uh, any crystal that comes anywhere near them dies. Is probably one of the best <laughs> vests in the game. Is horrible to deal with. Like any, and that's just not crystals. It's other close attackers too, like stun lancers. Anything else that comes too close to it, uh, it just straight up doesn't make it. Like, or it's so badly damaged that the rest of the squad can easily take care of it. Like, it's great on rangers. A lot of this stuff is great on rangers. Um, uh, this. Vest right here is a stasis field vest. I rarely get a chance to bring it because I rarely get a chance to get it. So it's going right here and bring it regularly because I will try to bring it, but I I just can't seem to get it on the random rolls. I I don't think is it a random roll? I think it's a random roll. I don't seem to get it. But I will try and get it because it's a nice little uh, way to heal HP. But most of the time, I I will bring another vest. I will bring this vest instead. Uh, this offers better protection. Uh, you don't have to worry about the HP gain. And even though it's technically better, I, I just prefer this vest. Do you know what I mean? Like this, there's something to say if you're about preference. And I prefer that best. All right, let's move on to to bullets. Let's see. Boom, boom. Ooh, let's start with Talon rounds. I never, if I have a chance to like pick any of the other rounds, I ne would never bring that. Ten extra critical is nice, or twenty extra. I think it's just ten. Um. It's nice to have extra critical damage or extra crit range, but it's basically helping you get a chance of a chance to hit. Uh, so you have the hit chance and then you have the critical damage chance after the hit chance. And honestly, I would prefer an enhanced hit chance. And that's why this is probably going to go up. Uh, uh, it depends. I have a special build like a sniper. Yeah. Or somebody with low aim, I'll bring... Uh, the tracer rounds but the talon rounds i just don't see the usefulness in them from when i use them it's just sort of like oh you do extra critical okay that's nice but if i was in a situation where i need something else besides that you're not going to help with that such as armor piercing and that brings me along to always bring always bring armor piercing around it's great against anything with armor and most things have armor, so you're you're always going. Most late game enemies have armor, so it's always going to be useful. It's always going to be useful. Uh, very very rarely do I get into situations in the game where I thought, okay, armor piercing rounds are not going to be needed here. Even with ar enemies with no armor uh, whatsoever, it's still nice to have armor piercing round in case armored enemies show up um now early game it's not that great because there's not that many armored enemies going around but mid to late you start to run across more and more armored enemies and armor piercing rounds ap rounds magnifique emp rounds i would say are slightly below armor piercing rounds like blue screen rounds take out sector pods. Um, for that alone, they get to put, they get always bring, especially late game, because I can guarantee you there's always gonna be sector pods. There's always gonna be gatekeepers. There's always gonna be something that's just gonna be a problem for you. And uh, speaking of which, little known fact about fire. It causes uh, psychers to not be able to use their abilities. 
And it's perfect for that. It causes constant pain, so they can't really focus. I and it's I. It was one of my favorite ways to to beat down the the warlock is to just hit him with fire constantly. I don't know if acid has the same effect, but I'll say bring regularly. Um, but here's the thing. Some things are immune to fire, and some things are immune to acid. Well, only one thing is really immune to acid. So, I take that with what you will, but I still prefer fire rounds. Only like, wait, wait, wait I'm trying to think, what's immune to fire? I think the only thing that's immune to fire is the pyro unit that the advent gets and let's let's be real here i don't i'm not afraid of that thing <laughs> mid to late game you're not afraid of that guy anymore he's sort of like i consider him weaker than a, a simple stun lancer or a simple advent trooper an advent trooper will actually be more dangerous than the and then an advent purifier um because they can shoot you and they shoot and they stay in cover they don't get too close to you now fire attack misses more often than it hits and it only really just like slightly burns your takes one hp away you can just go into a certain area and hunker down now if don't get me wrong if you get surrounded that's pretty bad but still uh fire rounds are probably the best for this because they just mess up everything Acid damages armor too. But I think I prefer fire just because. I don't know. It, it has. Um, I get fire rounds the most. And I, I think it's a definite damaging or messing up psychers. Here, acid rounds, I'm not so sure. Put in the comments if you know for sure. But yeah. Right there. Okay, do we switch to grenades or do we do utility items? Honestly, I think we do utility items. Because grenades are the longest and they take the most time. So let's start with the med kit. Always bring. I don't have to explain why med kits heal HP. There's literally almost no other way to do it. There's probably a couple other ways. But it's probably the best way. Mimic Beacon. Boom. Do I need to explain why? Always get a Mimic Beacon. Always have two Mimic Beacons if you can get them. It's a get out of jail free card for at least a couple of enemies. It's probably the best thing you can build. All this other stuff is just superfluous. When you stop to think about what the Mimic Beacon does for you. It gives you a distraction. It gives you time. It leaves. It gives you an opening for some enemies too. Because they will run up and leave themselves out of cover. Just to get rid of the Mimic Beacon. The Mimic. Mimic Beacon. Okay, I mispronounced it enough. Now to move on to something else. Um, the Serum here. It gives a nice little boost, but I'll put it on if it has room. It gives a nice boost, but I, it's not, it's not terrible, but I just don't use it that often, if that makes sense. It comes in so late, and I have so many other options. It just doesn't, I just don't really use it that well. Do you know what I mean? Like, other stuff, I prefer, I would straight up prefer, I prefer a grenade, I prefer a mimic beacon a, a heal with a med kit or any bullets and just anything over that mind shields you should bring this regularly you will fight um mind control units throughout your playthrough so you have to have some kind of protection i'm really bad about this um in case you hadn't noticed but you all should do it. You should all bring it. Do not follow my lead. I am so bad at that. Like, it's it's terrible. Trust me, bring it. Um, the Skulljack. That is basically blue screen rounds before uh, and blue screen uh, grenades before. 
you get Bruce Green and stuff. It's less efficient than it because you have to have like a. It's, you have to have a specialist who specializes in hacking. So, in many ways, I consider it uh, like inferior to it. Let's put it down to bring regularly. Uh, you know, an irregular bring. We'll put it here because, honestly, once you get blue screen stuff, you stop. And once you use the storyline stuff, and like it's like... I only really use it if I have room after a certain point. And I'm not going to put it in if you have room because you, you need to bring it early on for storyline purposes and for helping your hackers be more efficient, efficient at hacking. So, yeah, I'll put it right there. I'll put it there. Do I put... Alright, let's look at the others here. Um... Respective field, uh, I never even bring that. I never even build it. Uh, so I, I never build these two either because I don't know. I just don't feel see the uses in either of these two. If you can tell me, uh, because it, uh, the sustain field where where it, it um puts you in a stasis for like a short period for one turn. And it saves you from dying. Let's get a nice get out of jail free card, but a mimic, a mimic beacon does it that better. Or you can just get heal them. Or you can put the vest on. You have so many other options to protect your soldier. Why would you have this on it? Like, that's sort of like, no. And I just don't feel any use for the refractive field. I barely remember what it does. I just don't use it. Uh, so I just, I'm just putting it in never build. Lore. Um, this is where you lure the lost. If I have room. I, I do like the idea of it being useful, but the lost aren't really a threat threat in this game. If you know what you're doing, the lost aren't um, all that scary. Battle Scanner. bring irregularly it's nice to do some scouting it's nice to get some uh, surveillance and maybe even reveal a few you know, enemy units that are hiding that's always useful I mean I could do some combo stuff with the hell weave and a uh, ranger but I think it's better if you have some way to just instantly know when bad guys are coming in at you super helpful Grenade! Always bring. Uh, the, it, at the beginning of the game, I would say, you know what? Bring regularly. It destroys cover. It does literally everything. It's like your main way of doing damage at the beginning. But as time goes on, it gets weaker and weaker. But at the very beginning, you're going to have to bring it almost all the time. You at least have one grenade on you. At the very least, one grenade. Um, plasma grenade. That's different. Plasma grenade does a lot more damage. And yes, yeah, that's that's an always brain borderline. You always have at least uh, one of those. Um, a landmine. I very rarely bring these. Uh, it's because I get them so late. But really, there should be a bring regu regularly. But I'll put it bring you regularly because of how infrequently I bring them. Uh, and it has to do with the fact that I get it so late. If I got it earlier, I'd be much more willing to use a mine. But mines are kind of like I, I have other stuff that I can use for that that does. Not damage, but at least gets me in a good position. But I'll put it right here because I do like them. I do find that they do a lot of damage, and they're a good idea to to basically do it to set up an ambush. Very helpful. 
Flashbang. Basically, your early game Mind Shield, and your early game Mimic Beacon, and your early game like, uh, like, like it's, it's actually more useful than a regular grenade at times, um, because it sets you up to basically survive a horrible comedy of errors or a snowball that's just, it's just ruining your day. You can set up a flashbang and just. You just sit and cover and hope they don't kill you. Like, it, it, flashbang is a bring until maybe mid to late game. Maybe late, late game because you'll have all the other stuff and you'll have other options. But you should always, you should have a flashbang on you. In fact, I recommend you have two on you on the higher difficulties. Because, let's be honest, they're going to hit you hard in the on those higher difficulties and having a flashbang that will save you some pain is a good idea uh, frost grenade if I off oh. now at first I was like if I have room but honestly out of all the weapons you get from the alien hunters it's probably one of the few that I would say is super useful it stops an enemy for a set amount of time, and it's very, very effective at doing it. It's one enemy. If you can get two, sometimes I'm able to get two, and that's and that's a great day for, to be me when I can get two, man. I'm like, I'm like, yes, yes, yes. I'm clapping. I'm happy. Yeah, that's a good time. That's a good time. Uh, let's go into this. Oh, this is the smoke grenade. That's... Like, when you have the option for a flashbang or a smoke grenade, do not even look at this smoke grenade. I don't even... Like, why did they have that? They had it in XCOM 1 as, like, a thing for the support. And it was supposed to make the support, like, Oh, he's got a grenade. See, he's useful. You should have just gave the support medkits. Forget about the grenade. The, the grenade is stupid. The smoke grenade is stupid. I mean, sometimes it's useful. Like, mid to late game. Uh, or, you know, early to mid game. Early to mid game. You can use it to protect yourself, but... Use the flashbang. The flashbang does that more efficiently. Smoke grenade, if your enemy's in there... He gets the bonus, too. So, you are effectively hurting your chances. Like, if you're fighting stun lancers, and you throw out a smoke grenade, and a, a, a pod of stun lancers get revealed on that turn, too, they'll come in near a smoke grenade, and like, hey, thanks, man, thanks, this is great. They'll be protect like, the, the... I don't even build them. Let's just end it there. Blue screen grenade. It's a single use blue screen round, but I still think you should use them. I consider them slightly more useful than a regular grenade because they can take out some really powerful heavy, heavy hitters. Their robots, Advent robots, are a nightmare, especially the Sectopod. Ugh. Sectopod's terrible. Sectopod's terrible. Gas grenade. Nobody, very few things are resistant to the gas grenade. But I still bring them irregularly. Same with acid. Like, these special grenades are kind of weird to me. Um, they don't... The special grenades are kind of weird to me because they don't really have any use for me. Um. Uh, Outside of certain situations or against certain enemies. Certain enemies that are mean to it, it's kind of like, oh, that sucks. I don't know. But these grenades are pretty good. Uh, but here's the thing. The plasma grenade is always going to have a little bit of an advantage, in my opinion. 
Because the plasma grenade takes out cover guaranteed and it causes uh, guaranteed damage against anybody. Except for uh, a chosen with blast resistance. But these guys will come in handy for that. Um, it depends on the situation. Those three grenades depend on the situation. Like, it depends on who we're fighting. It's, even the blue screen is like that, but I say uh, blue screen is much more useful because we're, we're going to fight electronic enemies in, in the mid to late game. That's, that's happening. There's nothing you can do about it except bring grenades and bring blue screen rounds. Blue screen rounds are infinitely more useful because you never run out with blue screen rounds. Mm. Blue screen grenades, you run out. And once you once you use these grenades, you better have made a good choice on those. Like a grenadier is probably the best person to use it. But if you have no grenadiers, then these grenades kind of just sort of like sit in your base collecting dust. But yeah, that's been XCOM 2 Utilities done. Thanks for stopping by. If you hit the like button, if you like what you saw. If you didn't like what you saw and heard from me, then go in the comment section and tell me what you didn't like. I'll work on it. Uh, also, if you like me as a YouTuber overall, then that subscribe button is awfully tempting. I suggest you just give in and push it. I'll get you guys in the next one. Take care.